Hi, my name is Yvonne Delorto from Purple Pulpo, and I'm doing another Zoom pod, and I'm looking at the resource from Jolly Learning and the latest resource from Jolly Learning, which are Jolly Plays. So let's have a quick peek inside and see what's on offer with this new resource. So this is the cover of the new resource, and it says bring in reading to life. Well, in fact, it does bring a lot more to life than just reading. The book not only looks at plays, but it also revises these concepts and children are constantly uh, revising their letter shapes, digraphs and alternative sounds. They're enhancing their listening and speaking skills because as plays, they have to pay attention and listen for their cue. And also they're hearing the words being pronounced and intonation and using punctuation. And Lastly, grammar activities and extension ideas. Children are passively using some of the concepts that they've done in their grammar classes or previous Jolly Phonics classes. And the extension ideas bring everything together because at the back of the book, we have cross-curricular content so that children are making sense of what they're doing. If the play content covers a particular subject, for example, zebras, well, Children can learn about um, where do zebras come from, what do they eat, or if they do volcanoes, what's involved with the volcano. So it's covering concepts such as science or general knowledge, and also ones like colours and clothes and also animal sounds. So it's quite a big area of learning. And also at the back, we have arts and crafts. We have some masks, but also some ideas and suggestions on other activities that can be done as an extension idea. So we start the beginning of the book, which is very similar to the teacher's resources in Jolly Learning and Jolly Grammar, in that it's very easy for the teacher to um, navigate the pages as an at a glance format, as you can see here with the letter sounds um, in sequence and order, and also giving you an idea of, uh, how, of some spelling. And it also has the tricky words that are color coded and the names of the characters, which the children probably know, and the days of the week. And I like the idea that these are in color sequence because it also means that they're in groups and we can highlight this when we, um, the children are using the resources, spot the tricky words and they can color them in these colors. Also at the beginning, we have a traffic light system which indicates the level of difficulty or the length of the play. And this can work with your groups, their abilities or ages. And also starting to look at the at a glance section, you have an idea of what is contained within the book. And this is extremely helpful if you are using this resource in your planning because then you can see exactly what you can do. So the play is not just a one-off resource. We can do the play, we can explore so many things and also it could become part of your topic content. So let's have a look at one of the pages and these are a photocopyable page from the play. And as you can see, it's very easy to look at children have a prompt and also it gives them an idea of when they have to speak. So this is just a very, very clear prompt for the children when they're reading and speaking. And again, it's an assessment for tool for you as a teacher that they are listening, that they're using their skills, as I've mentioned, blending and segmenting, and that also that they are using intonation when they're speaking. And if we look here further on in the book, we have a bit more information as the children go into the different levels. And also they are beginning to understand the organization of plays because this is part of their reading skill as well. Being able to understand you know, for creative writing, for formal, for informal, report, fiction, nonfiction. So understanding the dynamics of a play is really important as well. And additionally, there are songs, and these appeal to our audiovisual children who, who respond very well to this type of medium. And again, they're having to use their reading skills and, and speaking skills. So it's another thing that is included into the plays. And then just looking at the two pages that can be used for extension, look at all these things that can be done on the left here. And I like the idea that the story sequencing strips could be cut up and be part of a group 
work where children have to decide the order. This can also be done online if you have them in teams where you have children working in groups. And also the ordering and sequencing, these are things that are really important for later on skills as well. And it can also be used for identifying parts of speech. You can have children looking for different things within these sentences, such as um, adjectives, adverbs, verbs. Um, so they could be using colors to identify these. And also if we look on the other side, we could be using these for dictionary work and also children are having to compile sentences. So we have um, some reinforcement going on here and also extension of some of the skills that they've already learned with the Jolly Grammar. And if we look at the crossover activities, this is just an example of one of the masks that are available. And again, apart from what's on the left, it's fine motor skills, colouring in. And if you're doing this online, you may not be able to um, send this to the children, but they could make their own mask. And so we have some creativity so that they could do the play online and partake, but develop their own masked character to go with their part. And as we can see here, additionally, apart from what's in the plays, I like the idea of exploring non-fiction and fiction stories that can be wrapped around the play. And also, if we were thinking of creative writing, what a great way of having your play and then saying, let's put this into a story, but we can change the beginning or the middle and the end. And children can then think about how they can take information and reuse it in a different way. And as a teacher, it's a great way um, for you to use the role play as assessment or evaluations because you're hearing the children um, using language. Also, do they recognize certain concepts? And do I need to revise certain concepts? But something else that is also a great addition to this book is that we have, we have storyboarding and what we have here are comic strips and the comic strips work really well because if there are children that are that, that, that too find writing quite challenging then being able to draw and then speak about what they've drawn this is a great assessment assessment tool because then you'll be able to know whether they have followed the play they understand the beginning and the middle and the end and also when they're giving you the story orally what have they missed out and what have they included? What vocabulary are they using? So the sentence strips are a really great idea and the, the comic strips rather because they have no pressure then. It's all about visual cues and attaching these to language. So the Jolly Place is a great resource and it's one that I think could be worked into your literacy hour or your literacy classes. And again, it's a just diversion and way children can be using language in a hugely positive way. So I hope you have enjoyed this little weather zoom and um, speak to you soon and enjoy the resource. It's a great one for young children. Bye for now.